Before we begin, my name is Rabbi Benjamin Blau. I am the rabbi at the Green Road Synagogue, where Joel was an incredibly important member for many, many years. I will ask everyone to please turn off your all, every possible electronic device. So we will have uh, dignity and decorum during the course of the service. I do want to just mention in advance, you may notice that there are a little bit of deviations today when a person passes away over the holiday, over the holiday of Sukkot, and we have a funeral as we do today during Cholamoe. There are deviations, there are slight changes. We say it's a tremendous merit to the deceased to pass away during this time period, but you notice some slight changes. We won't say the memorial prayer, even my few day growth, which uh, is not normative, is a, as a function of that. And even the fact that we'd be having visitation as opposed to regular shiva, which I'll explain at the end, is a result of that. But at the, at the end of the day, we are here really to pay tribute to an exceptional, exceptional human being, and that doesn't change without the slight deviations. We're gathered today. We're going to start off actually with the parak of Tehillim, and then we'll continue from there. This is Perak of Gimel, chapter 23. Mizmor le David, Adonai rawi lo etzar, binos desha yarbitzeni amin mimenuchos yin ha'aleini. Navsheni, navshi yishovev, yankeni magle tzedek l'ma'an shimo, gam ki elek begeit zamoves, lo yara ki ato imodi. Shifta go mishantech ha'heim ha'yinach ha'muni, tarok l'fanai shokha neget zoriroi. Tishanta Bashem and Roshi Kosi Rivoyo, Aktova Chesed Yudafuni Koyame Chayai, Vishav Tuvesa Donoi, the Orek Yamim. A song of David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. God caused me to lie down in lush pastures, God leads me beside tranquil waters. God restores my soul and guides me in righteous path for God's name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your scepter and staff, they comfort me. Prepare a table before me in full view of my adversaries. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. May only goodness and kindness pursue me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for length of days. We've gathered today to pay tribute to Zelig David ben Moshe Eliezer HaKohen, Joel Axerod, a beloved husband, a devoted father, an incredibly, clearly loving grandfather, or should I say Saba, and of course, a very dear brother and brother-in-law. I'm going to start with more biographical remarks about Joel, talk a little bit about some of the lessons we could learn from his exceptional life, and then we'll turn it over to his two sons, Gary and Mark, to say more personal remarks regarding their father. Uh, Joel was a lifelong Clevelander. He did have short stints in Memphis and Dallas, but other than that, Cleveland was where he was, and that's where his loyalty lied. Although he did mention that because of his switches in school, he never went to kindergarten, which bothered him, but he was a lifelong Clevelander. And of course, in Cleveland in 10th grade, in a biology class at Heights High, he met the love of his life, Elaine, and the rest, as they say, was history. Actually, it was very interesting. Neither of them wanted, they weren't lab partners, but neither of them wanted to dissect the frogs, and therefore, they bonded, and that started a lifelong relationship. He went to The Ohio State University, and Elaine started at Northwestern, but transferred so they could be together as they were their entire lives. They got married right after college, bought their first home on Groveland. They would live there for 36 years, and that's where they raised their children. He was an exceptional person. And I want to focus on some of the midot, some of the character traits that he exhibited that really we can all learn from and really try to copy. I have to say, just hearing people going through the line, talking about him, someone said it best, he was the epitome of a mensch. He was such a man of dignity, of character, of an integrity. He was loyal, and he would do anything for his family and friends, and especially for his grandchildren. He was passionate about his sports, and about his Judaism, and allow me to expand. He worked as an accountant, initially working with others, eventually having his own firm, and he was in that regard a man of incredibly honesty. We asked him later to be the treasurer of the shul because we needed someone who would be, get it, and if Joel said it, you knew it was exact, and it was right. I personally would ask him advice, and again, if he said this was the right way to do it, you knew it was the right way to do it. He enjoyed various activities. He was a runner. He had run track in high school, 
or wound up running as many as 16 marathons as an adult. Many people here were his running buddies. He was a very, very avid Cleveland sports fan. I always think of him with one of the Cleveland hats of a various sports team on his head. He loved coaching soccer and baseball. He, co he coached my son, and he was an exceptional coach, not only during the time when he was coaching my son, but years later he would check in to see how my son was doing. The thing about soccer was he didn't really know much about soccer to start, but he wanted to teach his children, and therefore he learned. He learned how to be a soccer coach and eventually wound up being an indoor soccer player. And again, many of the people who played soccer with him are here today. But that quality of being an incredibly supportive father really defined who he was. It was important that his son wanted to play soccer, so he learned how to play soccer. It was important in any activity they engaged in, their comment was, he was always there. He was there physically, making the time to be at all their events, be it sporting events or any of the activities they engaged in. But more profoundly and more deeply, he was there for them as a father for whatever they needed. He was there. He simply knew how to do things. He was very handy. He did so many things well. Before the age of looking it up on YouTube, he would figure it out, read a book, figure out how to install the dishwasher, figure out how to build this huge sukkah, that was this legendary sukkah that he built, built from scratch, anything around the house. In fact, his children were even saying now, they're waiting for him to come and fix certain things, because that, that was the job that he always did. He was extremely, extremely committed to his Judaism. He was a Kohen. We have missed his voice as one of the people giving us blessings over the last few years, and he wasn't himself. He loved singing Zmiro, had a beautiful voice. He kept it much, I guess the family knew it well. That was a revelation that I did not know, because he kept it very much to himself, being the private person that he was. He loved various parts of the davening, and in fact, his children were saying yesterday, this past Yamim Nora'im, when they got to the part of Mara Cohen, a per certain song in the part of the service, they cried and teary-eyed. It was one of their father's favorite moments. He was selfless to all, but especially towards his grandchildren. There was nothing that was more meaningful to him and nothing more poignant about his illness when he had the fear he wouldn't be able to see them grow up. In so many ways, he e exemplified two character traits that are described in the Mishnah and Pirkei Avot, both of them that I think we could all try to emulate and learn from. First and foremost, he was what we call Sameach Bechelko. He was happy with his lot in life. The mission describes who the individual who is rich, the person who is wealthy is the person who is simply happy with whatever he has. He loved what he had. He loved his family, his children, his grandchildren, his si siblings. He loved all the things that he was involved in. He loved his friends. If you were his friend, he was loyal to all ends. The normal trappings of wealth didn't matter to him. He was simply happy with what he had. And the other and perhaps most important quality that he had but he was blessed with a shame tov, a good name. The Mishnah Perkevas describes there are various crowns that people could have, but the crown of a good name is exalted above all. Joel Axrod was a person who had a crown of a good name. In Shul, in the community, with his family, with his friends, we all treasured him for who he was, and those lessons we'll hope will stay with all of us. As I mentioned to the family, we'll pay tribute to him today, but every day for the rest of our lives, knowing him has made us better people, and that perhaps is his greatest legacy, his greatest memory. Yehi Zichro Baruch. May his memory be a blessing first and foremost to his family and, of course, to all of our community. I'd like to call up Gary. Can I say a few words? All right, well, this is a bit of a random place to start here as I uh, was rummaging uh, through my thoughts, uh, writing this all down. Dad, in my eyes, you always did things the right way, even when they were awkward or difficult, like uh, calling the hotel manager of what I think was a Hilton Doubletree in Portland, Oregon, to uh, commend him for how he dealt with the situation when I accidentally locked Mark out of the hotel room and conked out. And so he had to get the master key in order to open up the door. 
Um, you're a man who's not afraid to show your pride. The one time it was slightly embarrassing. Uh, at uh, open house at uh, Heights High in 1997 in my chemistry classroom, the same room as your 10th grade uh, biology class where you met mom, um, well, uh, uh, once you uh, realized that, uh, you proceeded to tell my chemistry teacher. And then, of course, some of the other uh, parents told their kids, and I got razzed about it the next day. But uh, go ahead and boast about it. I know it's one of your uh, greatest points of pride. There's one amazing thing that uh, you did the day before Allie and I got married that I'll never forget. At the dinner, you were talking, and you suddenly uh, waved off the interpreters and began to sign in American Sign Language. I know how much you, uh, I, I know how much uh, Allie appreciated that and how much she loves you. Another fun memory I want to share, when we went to California in uh, December of 97, uh, as we drove down the coast, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure where we were, possibly somewhere north of San Simeon, we stopped at some point and walked out to the Pacific Ocean. I walked into the ocean uh, and my hiking boots and socks got soaked. You were initially so mad at me, and then days later you were laughing about the incident. To this day, every time I'm on, I'm on a coastline or near a major uh, natural body of water and wearing my regular clothes, I still wade in the water, but I make sure to take my shoes and socks off. Thank you for instilling uh, in me two of my greatest passions, sports and music. Getting me into Cleveland sports taught me patience and resiliency, as we all know. Uh, here are some of the highlights. Uh, when you were at uh, Cleveland Indians fantasy camp uh, one morning, the phone rings in my dorm room at, at Michigan. Uh, just after I stepped out to go to class, I ran back in. For some reason, I don't know why I, I, uh, I, I ran back in to pick up the phone, but I'm glad I did. On the other end of the line, uh, you had Pat Tavler, my favorite uh, player from the 1980s, calling me. You always knew how to create uh, special moments out of thin air like that. Through the years, we had shared memories of going to three World Series games. I remember talking to you on my first Father's Day in 2016, the very day uh, that the Cavs were on the cusp of winning the NBA title. Uh, and uh, as it so happened, uh, your TV feed was about uh, 30 seconds faster than mine. So uh, I got the news uh, before it happened on my end, which was, which was pretty cool. Um, though I'd long been yearning to see a Cleveland team win a, cha win a championship, uh, when it happened, it was actually such a foreign feeling. Uh, with regard to music, you started my obsession with the Rocky movies and the phenomenal music from, let's just say, the first four of the series. Um, those of you who know me well know that I'm not a great speaker, but I have a penchant for speaking metaphorically. So while continuing uh, with the uh, musical lyrics, uh, while I can't physically see you, Dad, like the, like the Moody Blues thing, I know you're out there somewhere. Your interest uh, in country music uh, about t uh, 20 years ago or so uh, taught me that life's a dance you learn as you go. Sometimes you lead, sometimes you follow. Here's another one for you, an oldie, uh, Simon and Garfunkel's America, particularly the following lyrics. Laughing on the bus, playing games with the faces, counting the cars on the New Jersey Turnpike. They've all come to look, to look for America. This was my personal theme song the year after I graduated from college as I'd moved to New Jersey for an internship. Without the support of mom and you, that amazing time and that amazing opportunity that I had would not have happened. Thank you for so many great adventures, like when you drove with me out to Highland Park, New Jersey to help me move in and settle into the place where I lived during that internship. And uh, when leaving the house in the University Heights, uh, the car was so packed that mom had to literally hand us bars of soap through the windows. Switching back to sports, to quote one of the guys I remember us uh, watching often on Sports Center, the late Stuart Scott, when you die, it does not mean that you lose to cancer. You beat cancer by how you live. When you live and, the man and in the manner in which, in which you live. The way you lived, in the words of Montgomery Gentry, that's something to be proud of. That's the life you can hang your hat on. You don't need to make a million, just be thankful to be working. If you're doing what you're able, and putting food there on the table, and providing for the family that you love, that's something to be proud of. And if all you ever really do is the best you can, well, you did it, man. And when you were younger, I know you threw a new hitter in, in Little League Baseball. And even then, uh, uh, and then uh, you took the mound at Cleveland Indians, Indians Fantasy Camp in, uh, back in 2000. Speaking of the pros of pitching, I have to quote uh, what I recall as one of your favorite poems, Casey at the Bat. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. 
The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. I'm going to leave the rest uh, open-ended because you've brought us so much joy through the years in and out. Thank you for all the love you've shown to Daniela as well. I could see the sparkles in your eyes when you were with her or talking to her on FaceTime. And for the Swedish rock group, uh, ABBA, thank you for the music. And also from ABBA, sometimes I wish that I could freeze the picture and save it from the funny tricks of time, slipping through the fingers, slipping through my fingers all the time. Thank you for all those years as my, my, as my soccer and baseball coach. Even if some of that was tough love, having you, you as my coach was the, was the best. Thank you for being you, and thank you for being my dad, and thank you for everything. To quote the, the country music, uh, to quote country music uh, legend Sarah Evans, I could not ask for more. You're the best. I love you. And to slip one more musical reference in there, I'll never forget you, leader of the pack. Mark. Thank you all for being here, first of all. Um, I know it means a lot to all of us, to our whole family, and um, everything that so many of you did to help over the last year is really, um, really special. I, I, I don't have words to put to it. Um, my dad worked hard at everything he did, um, whether for his job, his friends, his community, or himself. Um, I didn't know him then, but this apparently started when he was quite young. Um, we often heard stories of his jobs, including at a formal clothing shop for boys and young men. Um, apparently, I didn't get the fashion skills passed down. Um, and an ice cream factory. Um, th those eating skills, the ice cream eating skills, at least were passed down. Um, of course, it, it continued into his jobs as a professional, um, with him literally working until he physically couldn't. Um, but hard work for my dad was not only about jobs. Um, he was so loyal to his friends and family and everything he loved. Um, he put every effort uh, into visiting or writing letters to friends in difficult situations, into fixing things for Marissa and me in our home and, and for Gary and Allie too, um, into using his accounting skills to serve the organizations that helped our family, uh, like the shul and the public school system, um, into working late so he could take time off for our sporting attempts um, and school events, um, and in, into unrequitedly cheering for Cleveland and its sports teams, um, despite um, not getting much in return often. Um, at least Ohio State football gave him a better return on those efforts occasionally. Um, and hard work for my dad was, was for himself also. Um, he was a good athlete, a, a great athlete for his context. Um, we heard a lot about his two Little League no-hitters that Gary mentioned. I actually saw the local newspaper clippings, um, so I, I can confirm it's not mere legend. Um, and in thinking about it, was was shocked to think about the fact that a newspaper actually covered Little League Baseball. Um, and we saw him train for marathons, um, many marathons, and keep on running after marathons weren't um, in the mix anymore. Um, but this was his approach to surgical recovery, too. Um, two months after major surgery in March, he drove for half a day so he and my mom could visit us in East Lansing and um, got there and walked many miles on Shabbat um, so he could see what the kids were up to. Um, on one of his hospital visits, the doctor investigating his insanely low heart rate, um, which he maintained uh, a great pride for, um, and learning about, the doctor learned about him being a constant runner, um, told him, quote, we are in the presence of greatness. Um, and I think, I think he appreciated that. This was something that he really worked at and cared about. Um, and what was his proposed reward for all of this work? Um, well, chocolate chip cookies, um, of course, um, and brownies, and ice cream, um, and orange sherbet, uh, especially from the ice cream factory where he had worked. Uh, but of all the serious effort and reward, um, I think his almost eight years as Saba were the most amazing to me. Um, he loved these kids so much, and they love him back so much. He showed this absolute selflessness in their presence, switching to whatever activity they chose, building a Barbie dream house on demand before dinner, walking all day for activities despite having just completed lung surgery, 
running sprints around in circles around our house, um, chasing a two-year-old because that's what she wanted to do. Um, one of my strongest memories is him coming up with a song after song to entertain baby Aviva and Marissa and me on what became known in our house as the eclipse visit uh, because it was um, some major eclipse where we had to have some sort of um, special glasses to go outside. Every time I hear Aviva sing, uh, which she loves doing, I wonder whether the seeds for her love of music were planted then, or perhaps over the following years when Peter, Paul, and Mary's stew ball in Saba's voice was the only way to have a non-combative diaper change. One of the last things my dad said to me was that he always heard me saying, Natan, where are you going? And that also is just like his Saba, never sitting still, always running, um, unless there was a sporting event to watch and sit and focus. It's so unfair that Saba, Daniela, Aviva, and Natan don't get to continue developing those deep bonds. So when we stop to help or visit a friend in need, or when we push ourselves to work an extra hour or run an extra mile, I hope my dad gives us all the inspiration to do those things. And certainly, when we all eat a chocolate chip cookie or brownie or Pierre's orange sherbet, I hope we all have a moment to think of my dad. Thank you. As I noted at the outset, uh, due to the fact that we're having this funeral over the course of Sukkot, we're not going to say the traditional memorial prayer, but I will ask everyone to rise, and we are going to say another chapter of Psalms. This is Kuf Lamed. Shira Malot, Imam Akim, Kratika Adonai, Adonai, Shima Bikoli, Tienad Narkashuva, the Kalta Hanunai, Imavono Tishmoya, Adonai, Miyamo, Kim Kaspika, Leman Tivore, Kivisi Adonai, Kifsa Nafshi, Velidvara, Kalti Nafshi, Ladonai, Mishomim La Boker, Shomerim La Boker, Yakel Yisrael La Adonai, Kim Adonai Achesed, Rabbi Mofedus, Veho Yiftes Yisrael, Mikol Avonosov. You may be seated. This concludes uh, the formal part of our service. The interment will take place for those who are following at Zion Memorial Park. As I noted, we're in a unique circumstance. Uh, the family, the formal shiva in that sense, will take place once the Chag is complete, complete. But there is the opportunity now to pay respects and come and visit the family, particularly now that Gary and Mark are here with Elaine. Um, so the hours for that will be as follows. It will be today following the internment until 5, and then at uh, 6.50, we will be having a mincha, and, and then, my, and then uh, visiting station from then until 9. Tomorrow and Thursday, the times are 10 to 12, 1 to 5, 7 to 9. Tomorrow as well, a mincha at 6.50, and Friday from 10 to 2. Once again, may his memory be a blessing. <laughs>